Um, hi everybody, uh, my name is Sarah Arizola. I'm the owner and founder here at St. Pete Ferments. That's where I'm at right now. Um, I'm in the kitchen. <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess uh, normally we'd all be getting ready for OBJ. Um, and that is sad. We can hear you loud and clear. Thanks. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so I've always had a really good time teaching at OBJ. And so thanks, Liza and Rising Light for um, thinking of the play shop folks um, and uh, yeah, miss you guys and um, hope everyone's healthy and safe. Um, and it's really cool idea that you guys had and um, I'm glad people can, you know, watch this a little bit later. Um, so yeah, um, just wanted to give an update on St. Pete ferments during uh, COVID-19. We are still up and running. Um, actually, my fiance Dean is setting up our curbside pickup tent right now because normally we do um, markets, which is a big source of our revenue. Um, but our community has been really, really supportive. Um, and so we're really thankful. Um, and, you know, during these kinds of instances, it's uh, a good opportunity and a good time to learn how to make your own foods and ferment your own foods. Um, so I'm just going to discuss the benefits of that a little bit. Um, but today we're, we're going to make sauerkraut. That's like the easiest ferment um, you can make. So if you're a beginner, I always recommend starting with sauerkraut. Even if you feel like you don't like it, like a true raw fermented sauerkraut is a lot better than some of like the bagged or you know shelf stable pasteurized crafts you may have had and making your own is always best and it's deceptively simple um all you need is cabbage and some sea salt and that's it that's all you need as far as ingredients you don't need any kind of special cultures you don't need vinegar you don't even need water the cabbage has enough in it um on its own um, so some of the benefits of making your own sauerkraut or fermented vegetables, I'm not going to so much talk about like the probiotic and live cultured benefits because there's so much information out there and um, it's kind of a lot. Um, so I think everyone knows that, you know, fermented foods are good for you. So I'm going to skip that and talk about some things that maybe people don't uh, often realize about fermented foods and why are they why they're so amazing. Um, one of the benefits is you can use your veggies before they go bad. Um, so fermented foods can last well over a year in the fridge. So if you have you know carrots that are kind of going limp or you have a you know pepper or something like there's um, all kinds of that you can pretty much ferment any vegetable. So uh, use this as a tool to reduce waste um, with your fermented veggies. Um, another benefit is the taste, obviously. Um, they're really delicious and you get like those nice sour flavors and just thinking about those flavors kind of makes you want to salivate and that prepares you for digestion. Um, so yeah, it's just a really uh, great uh, taste element to add to your dishes. Um, and on that note, Fermented foods are awesome because pretty much people who follow any diet can eat them. So whether you're vegan or carnivore or you're, um, you know, following some kind of like ketogenic diet or you're vegetarian or like even if you don't follow any diet, whatever, like you can uh, incorporate fermented foods um, like this into pretty much anything you eat. So that's one thing I really like about that. Um, and... Yeah, it's just a great tool to have in your toolkit. I think we're all trying to uh, minimize our waste and, you know, it's all, it's always just like a shame if you have to throw out our compost veggies. So this is like um, something that can um, help you just get one more use out of uh, using your veggies. All right, so I'm gonna get started. Uh, those are my essential ingredients that I showed you earlier. It's just cabbage and sea salt. Cabbage is nice because um, 
even like organic cabbage is pretty affordable and inexpensive and um sea salt you can pretty much use any sea salt uh i like to use just like plain sea salt um if you have himalayan sea salt that's great um or like kosher salt uh, really any kind of good sea salt will work uh, and then you just need a jar or some kind of vessel i just am going to reuse this jar uh reuse any jar just make sure it's clean and that it's um washed and make sure it has a cap because we're going to use that. Um, I've got my knife in my bowl and there's some optional uh, ingredients. I have just like a piece of ginger that I'm going to use to make this. Um, you can use pretty much any vegetable. Use any spices, chili flakes, peppers, got caraway seeds. Um, you could also, you know, shred up some radishes, carrots, turmeric. Um, so you can really make it your way. I'm just going to make a very basic sauerkraut so that no one gets overwhelmed if this is your first time, but it's very easy. And then uh, last, I have some fermentation weights that I had made here in St. Pete locally. So they're just like a food grade ceramic weight. You don't have to have these. I'll show you how I use them and I'll show you what you can use instead of fermentation weights. Um, so, you know, you don't have to go out and buy anything. Um, just use what you have and, um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty easy. So let's get started. Um, so I've already washed my cabbage and I'm just going to cut it in half. I was working with these cabbages yesterday and they're pretty dense. So um, I'm just going to cut that in half. And um, there's like this core part in the middle. Some people use that, some people don't. Let me like show you what I mean. That part there, I usually take that part out and you know compost it or feed it to my chickens. Um, it just kind of is a little woody for me, but you, you can you can definitely eat it. I'm just gonna take it out. All right, and then um, if you have like a food processor or a mandolin and you can get those like really fine shreds that's awesome um if you don't have that type of equipment don't worry you can just use a knife and that will be fine so i i'm gonna quarter this and then just kind of make really thin shreds i like my cabbage pretty thin but you can uh you know make whatever size cuts you want you just want it to be kind of like a thin shred um, I did take off the outer leaves of the cabbage, just the like the very green outer leaves. I probably should have showed you that, but um, they're they're already gone. Um, so if you buy cabbage and you know it doesn't have the it doesn't look like this, like it still has the outer leaves. Um, save those. I'm gonna save one of these leaves because we're gonna use it um, later. So just remember to do that. Just take off one of your outer leaves at the beginning and um, we're gonna use it to cover our sauerkraut. going to chop the rest of this and throw it in my bowl. Um, I always start with clean hands and that's good enough uh, for me if I'm fermenting at home. Um, I don't, you know, if I'm making sauerkraut at, at home, um, yeah, just wash your hands, which I think we've all been sure that to do that a lot anyway, so it shouldn't be hard to Remember, just clean hands. Um, I, you know, you don't have to really uh, worry about like everything being super sterile. You know, you're not like, uh, you know, inoculating like beer or anything like that. Um, wild fermentation, which is what we're doing, is pretty. It's pretty straightforward, and the microbes are pretty resilient. Um, so. You know, just make sure everything's clean, but you don't have to worry about bleaching or like 
anything like that. Um, okay, so that's a good amount of cabbage for me. And um, I'm gonna start salting it. So the amount of salt you wanna use, I just start with like a little sprinkle and then I start working it in. Like so. And at first you're gonna be like, this is really like, nothing's happening, but trust me, um, th this is, you know, how all, this is how I make all of my sauerkraut pretty much. Um, cabbage is 90% water. So if you, uh, you know, are wondering how does it get all the liquid that it needs, um, the salt is gonna pull it out of the vegetable and then um, it's gonna create that brine. So I'm gonna keep going here. Um, the amount of salt you wanna use is kind of to your taste. But just to make it easy for people to understand, you wanna make it about as salted as a chip or a cracker. So not too salty, but like seasoned. And if you taste it and you're like, I don't know if that's salty enough, just go ahead and add a little bit more. Um, you don't want it to be too salty. What salt does is it gives the good microbes a chance to start cultivating in your jar. And it also pulls the water out, which I mentioned before. Um, it, and it, um, you know, it keeps all those harm, more harmful strains of bacteria and molds at bay. Um, so salt is really important. Less salt will shorten the fermentation time and more salt will lengthen the fermentation time. So if you add too much salt, you, you know, it's not a lost cause at all, but you, you might need to wait longer for your ferment to be done. Um, Another thing that lengthens and shortens fermentation time is temperature. So high temperatures, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to uh, speed up fermentation. So microbes are like us when it's warm and sunny. They want to get out and be active. So that's going to create a, you know, a faster ferment time because the microbes are going to be really active. If it's cold, um, if you live in a cold climate, uh, the colder it gets, fermentation time is going to slow down. So keep that in mind. You can use salt to your benefit that way to um, manipulate the fermentation time. Um, so if, for example, in Florida, it gets pretty warm. And so adding salt will kind of help level out that fermentation time because um, you don't want it to be too warm with not enough sea salt, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, so this is getting close to what I want. Um, I'm going to go ahead and chop up some ginger and just let this stuff, let my cabbage shreds sweat out a little bit. Okay. Some other good veggies uh, that I like to add to sauerkraut are garlic. Garlic's really delicious. You could do onion, green onion. I think I said turmeric before. Um, caraway is like a pretty classic seasoning to use. Caraway is like the ride tasting spice. Um, I mean, you can pretty much use anything. Um, there's no, there's no limit to the possibilities. Um, okay. I'm just kind of chopping this up. There's no really like rhyme or reason to how I'm doing this. I'm just kind of doing like, this is like reflective of my mood right now. It's just like, yeah, this is good. I'm not really worried about it. It's going to be delicious. All right. So I'm going to sprinkle that in there and, um, start mixing again. And you want to, you know, taste it along the way. Like I'm doing. And what you're looking for, well, we're almost there. 
What you're looking for is like a nice drip when you squeeze it. Um, see if you can see this. Yeah, so that's what you want. You want it to drip easily. Um, you get like a really good arm and hand workout. Um, so if you're, you know, um, bored at home, you can do this. This is like a good way to get some energy out. Um, you can also like do this with kids or your whole family. Um, you know, once you chop everything up, you can <laughs> find ways to put your uh, friends and family to work too, right? <laughs> All right, um, so this is pretty good. Make sure you guys can see what I'm talking about. It's just this like drippy brine. So the brine is really important because um, with lacto-fermentation, which is what we're doing, um, we're favoring lactic acid bacteria, which is where you get that sour flavor from when you taste like a raw fermented vegetables or like even your sat like a real sourdough bread you get that sour flavor um in those types of bacteria thrive in an anaerobic or oxygenless environment so what we're going to do is push all of this sauerkraut below the brine or the liquid line and that is going to help them cultivate and keep everything safe and I'll talk about food safety in a minute because I know that's a big concern people have when they ferment they want to make sure they're doing it safely um, all right so this looks pretty good to me I could probably go a little bit longer but for the sake of time I'm going to go ahead and dry this but this looks good it's pretty drippy it's like pooling in my bowl See that? So we're going to build the jar. If I can open it, there you go. So that's always the first step. Step is to chop and salt. Now we're going to pack the jar. Um, as you stuff your jar, you want to just press it each time, like as you go along. You're trying to get rid of the, I'm making a huge mess, you guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish I could say I'm not like this, but that's not true. <laughs> um, okay, so you're just gonna push down as you go along, getting rid of any air pockets in any space. You want to eliminate any of those, you know, air pockets that might have oxygen in them. Okay. And um, I'm going to leave a little bit of head space for our brine. Um, I, I like glass to use as a fermentation vessel um, just because you can see through it. It's a little psychological for me. I like to keep an eye on my ferments um, at home. Um, also, gloss is, you know, it's easy to clean, um, and you can use, you know, different vessels like ceramics or plastics. Um, plastics are a little tricky. You have to use a certain, you know, grade of plastic, and even then, some people are really unsure about it. So, glass is pretty perfect because we all, you know, have maybe a jar of spaghetti sauce or something that, you um, we use and yeah, glass is awesome. So just use glass, you don't need anything super fancy. All right, so that's pretty well packed in there. You can see, yeah. I'm gonna pour my brine on top. And I have a little bit left over, but I'll deal with that in a minute. So I'm gonna do it like that. So the brine level should be above your, your cabbage shred, should be sitting above that. 
and you're just going to tuck everything under the brine. They say keep it under the brine and all will be fine. So if you remember that, you'll be successful at fermentation. Um, and then I'm going to put this cabbage leaf that I showed you earlier on top. This just kind of helps to like hold everything down in the jar. It's just an extra level of protection. So let's say, you know, you did grow some molds or something. If it grows on your cabbage leaf and not your sauerkraut, um, you know, you can just dispose of that leaf and use a new one or a different fermentation leaf. Okay. So that's the purpose behind the cabbage leaf. And um, so I've got it wedged in there pretty good. And uh, as an extra, extra step, you don't have to do this, um, but any kind of like food safe weight, you can go on, it can go on top. So once I screw the lid on, um, that's gonna kind of hold that cabbage leaf in place. If you don't have a fermentation weight like that, um, you're just going to push the sauerkraut below the brine each day, and that's gonna keep it um, anaerobic or oxygenless, um, which you're gonna wanna do anyway. So fermentation isn't exactly set it and forget it, but it's very mild maintenance. You're just gonna screw your lid on finger tight, that way it'll keep critters out. Um, fruit flies really like fermented um, projects. So you just wanna keep some kind of solid cap on it. And um, that is going to kind of keep everything secure. Okay, that's pretty much how you make sauerkraut. Um, one last thing. This is going to get really active over the course of a few days. Um, the first day or two, you may not see very much activity, uh, but definitely by the third and fourth day, it's going to become very much alive. It's going to get really bubbly. It's going to get, you know, effervescent um, as the days go on. Your lid might even like start bulging and you might hear hissing and that's a good sign. That means you're your ferment is alive and it's doing its thing. Um, that being said, it can like leak out of the jar. So I just put it like in a bowl or on a plate or something so that if it does overflow, you can just catch the leftover liquid and then I usually just pour it back into the jar and do all that. Okay, um, that is how you make sauerkraut. It's really easy. Um, the time period on this is about, it's pretty warm in Florida right now, um, which is where we live. Seven to 10 days for like a home ferment of, of that size. It depends on where you're fermenting in your house though. Um, if you, you know, kind of want to be mindful of that. Um, what else? Yeah, I'd say seven to 10 days. Um, you can let it go longer. Uh, I usually ferment for about three to four weeks to get the flavor profile that I enjoy. Um, but once you taste that sour flavor, um, like your nose and your taste buds are so key when you're uh, fermenting. Um, so if it's sour, that lactic acid producing bacteria it has really taken over and that will outcompete any harmful mold or bacteria. Um, the bacteria that produce those sour flavors, um, that, that the acid is a byproduct of them metabolizing the nutrients in the vegetables. And so any kind of harm, like harmful to us microbes, they can't, they can't survive under a, low pH. So after like 4.6 pH, they can't survive. And those sour flavors don't really start producing until you're like at like a 3.5 to like low 3.0 range. So that sour flavor means you've successfully fermented and um, that is your key. I think I have a, oh, okay.
never mind. I thought I saw something on the screen. Um, yeah, so it's about seven to 10 days. Each day you're gonna push it below the brine and make sure you're you know, compressing all those air bubbles out. Um, and that's going to slow down after some time, which is great. Um, once it's sour and to your liking, um, then you can stick it in the fridge and it will last over a year <laughs> in the fridge. I've had, I still have fermented vegetables that I made maybe two years ago. Some are from even longer than, some are from like 2016, 2017. So it can last a long time. The flavor starts to change after about a year, but hopefully you've eaten it by then. Um, and if you don't want to store it in the fridge, it's good for about, you know, four to eight weeks after it's been fermenting. Um, after some time, the uh, microbes just outcompete each other and they all kind of die off, um, which, I mean, you still have an acidified product, um, but yeah. Okay. Um, I'll show you what a done sauerkraut looks like. So this is one that I made the exact same way. Um, this is from St. Patrick's Day, March 17th. So you can see, you know, the difference between like a done sauerkraut, it loses that um, like greenness to it and that's okay. Um, kind of has that tannish color. It's probably, see it's even, it's still bubbling. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe not, it's okay. Um, I actually haven't tried this. So I'm gonna try it on camera with you guys. See how it did. So I, I probably let this go a little longer than I normally would have, but that's okay. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. Mmm, that's good. So once your sauerkraut looks like that, <laughs> you don't have to ferment it as long as I did. Um, you can stick it in the fridge. You can take your weights out and use them again. You can leave that sacrificial leaf on there though. That's great. That'll kind of keep everything nice and hydrated. So when you oops, eat your sauerkraut, you can you know, take out what you need, put the leaf back on, and um, it's a good way to just maintain your jar of delicious sauerkraut. Okay, you guys, um, how did I do on time? 11.40, I'm a little early. <laughs> I'm kind of fast, sorry. Um, I'm gonna pull this screen a little closer and take any questions, maybe? Um, if you have a question, you can, well, you can ask me now or you can email me. Um, if you go to stpeteferments.com, um, my contact information is there. And my email address is Sarah with an H at stpeteferments.com. I'm happy to answer any and all questions. Um, oh. If you are interested in fermenting and you want more like content or like books to read, I really recommend Fermented Vegetables by Kirsten and Christopher Shockey. Um, that book is awesome. I wish I had a picture of it or like a, I wish I had it with me to show you guys. Um, but check that out. Um, I'll put this in the comments maybe later after the video. Um, I will figure out how to do that. <laughs> um, Wild Fermentation by Sander Katz is really good too. Um, that's got a lot of different types of fermented foods in it. So if, you, if you're like me and you started with sauerkraut and worked your way through like everything and become obsessed with it, that's a really good book because it's got a variety. Um, you know, there's all kinds of things you guys can ferment. Hot sauce is a really good one. Kombucha is really popular too. You can ferment ginger beer. Um, 
you can make your own vinegar, <laughs> like ferment your own vinegar from scratch, with it, which is really awesome. Um, kimchi, beet kvass, yogurt, kefir, um, all kinds of, you know, you get, a third of the world's foods are fermented. So you'll never get bored if you decide you really like fermenting and it becomes a hobby. Um, that's how I started out. Someone just posted something. Oh yeah. Um, so Liza was really sweet and added our <laughs> Venmo and all that information. Um, yeah. So I am a small business and, um, you know, I don't have any like loans or funding or anything like that. I started this business from scratch and, um, I, 100% rely on the support of our community, which I'm really grateful for. Um, and um, you can also support us by just, you know, spreading the word about our product. Or if you're looking for, you know, an intro to fermented foods, just want to get your feet wet and try something from us. Uh, we don't make anything bad. <laughs> I eat this stuff every day. So um, if you want to try something, you know, you're not sure, you can shoot me an email and I can help you find something. Um, we're getting toward the end of farm season in Florida, so uh, snacking on fermented foods is also a great way to preserve the harvest. Um, you can enjoy, you know, winter and spring harvest for a lot longer that way. Um, am I missing anything else? I don't know. Um, if you decide to make some sauerkraut uh, at home and uh, I mean, feel free to ask me any questions along the way. Um, you want to keep it out of direct sunlight is another thing because that can kind of kill off some of those microbes. Um, I usually just set it near like my coffee maker because I know I'm going to drink coffee at least once a day so I can check on my ferments at home during that time too. Um, don't heat it up like during the fermentation process. So you wanna keep this all like ambient temps, like room temperature above 105, 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, you start killing off certain microbes um, and you want those microbes to ferment your food. So uh, if you cook with fermented foods, that's fine. Um, don't feel like you have to eat it raw. Um, you'll still get a benefit from it. But I always say if you cook some, just eat some raw too. That way you're getting that live cultured benefit. Um, if you see any like surface uh, formations happening, um, sometimes that's yeast, sometimes it's mold. Um, if it's white, it's usually okay. So just pick it off and throw it out. Um, but yeah, if you actively check on your ferments, it's, it's easy to prevent mold that way. Um, I'm probably just going to keep rambling if I don't stop myself. So I will hop off. Um, if you have any questions, like I said, just email me. Our shop is open, um, Fridays and Saturdays. Well, we're doing curbside pickups, contactless, Saturdays and Sundays, not Friday. Saturday and Sunday from noon to 6 p.m. Um, our order page is on the website and um, we're only doing online transactions. So if you put in an order online, we will pack it the same day. And um, if it's after the weekend, it'll be ready for the next weekend. And we do deliveries for um, like our, it, within like, a certain zone in St. Pete. So if you are practicing social distancing and don't want to do curbside pickup, we can bring it to you too. And our man Ruben does deliveries. What up Ruben? Okay, I'm gonna skedaddle. Um, it was really great doing this in, um, I would say it was good to see you, but I can't see anybody. <laughs> Um, be sure to watch the rest of the videos of people. There's some great ones coming up. Um, and, um, yeah, I miss everybody. All right. Love you guys. Mwah. All right. Bye-bye.